Welcome to another Model Tree tutorial. I hope to take you through step by step on this one. So this is going to be a rather large tree. I was, uh, I've got a couple of orders uh, in here for uh, 16 inch tall trees um, and then some slightly smaller. So I had this armature um, sitting out in the yard and had this piece on it right there and I just decided to take that off because that just looks a little unbalanced. And the request for this tree is similar to what I have in my uh, Etsy listings with kind of a, uh, a straight up tree. Maybe I can show it in the video here for you so you can see the design that I'm going to be going for. So I will need to cut that, flatten that off there, but I'm thinking with this cut that I did there, this is this is well seasoned wood and it's actually pretty hard. Um, but I might do a little ring around that with some hot glue and then paint it so that it looks like a, an overgrown knot from a branch that was cut off a long time ago. So with this being a tree that will be more of a, a narrow tall tree, I'm going to cut off all of these branches that are going out in uh, way out to the side kind of directions. And so we're just going to snip those off, trim it up a bit. And sometimes you might think this is kind of a scary part of building a tree out because hey it did naturally grow that way sometimes I think that you know it's it actually grew that way it is natural why not leave it um, but I have a, a vision in my head of what I really want it to look like and the final tree needs to be a little different and so even though it looks to some like a nice tree as is needs to be trimmed to become what we want it to be. A big part in trimming here is to look for any branches that are touching each other and kind of clip those away because if they're if they're coming close and touching each other it gets a little too busy and makes it difficult to put the smaller branching material into the tree and so as you see me trimming here that's a lot of what I'm doing is just trying to clear space so that I can put new material in there that will be um, that will act like smaller branching so if we take just clinging together but if I can put this kind of stuff in there in different areas that will uh, give more surface area for all of the fake leaves the greenery to, to attach to and so we want to have room to be able to work in that. And when I start doing that, adding the greenery, uh, I'll pick up the trimmers now and then and trim some more that I see as I'm going through the process. I'm also trimming a lot of the real thin branches that won't be strong enough to, to hold up hold on to anything just like some, some real almost hair like branches real thin stuff so that'll come off and sometimes it's easier to just get a instead of a tree trimmers just get some wire cutters in here and trim some of that off so there's a lot of thought that goes into to this part of things, a lot of uh, fine detail work and trimming because we want to make sure that the tree 
ends with the look that we want and that starts with the armature that we have right here. So a lot of your work when you're building the tree out is done on this first armature, the foundation uh, of our tree. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm ready to go ahead and start adding some of the branch material to it. And it will make quite a mess. And I just pick that stuff up afterward and, and then vacuum each time I do one of these. The next step to creating your tree is to come in here and start adding small branching material. And there are a number of options from that. I have some common materials here from the desert here in Utah uh, that work for small branching. Uh, a little bit brittle, but once they're glued on and everything added, they're not bad. Another one that works really good that I'm going to use a lot here is this stuff that is actually from a ground cover dead flower. Uh, this material comes from a plant called dragon's blood commonly, kind of a succulent ground cover. And I will use the hot glue gun for this. And the first thing, uh, the first place we want to place it is inside. So we want to get the center done as much as possible first so that we're not reaching in past stuff that we've glued on. And this is where I might come in and cut a few more pieces off as I'm seeing what I have available there inside. And you can either put the glue on the branching material or on the tree itself. Either way, you'll do what you need. I'm going to stick this right down in the middle and just connect it right in there. So the bulk bulky area that's going to receive all of the greenery is kind of joining some of these other small branches that are in here. And so I will just continue adding these pieces in here until I get this filled out the way I like it. And like I say, you want to try and work on these middle sections first. Sometimes I like to touch the glue early on the branch and then slide the piece along so that I'm getting more glue in the area to hold that together. Some of these pieces I'll leave a longer branch there, especially when it has a small piece like that. And we can put that in there somewhere to help. And actually this, um, this branch that has been cut right there is I think a good area for that. Now this is getting away from the center, but I'm still going to go ahead and put that on right there. Touch it down and slide it on there. Alright, so I want to go and fill in the center of the tree first. pretty well filled in. I've started coming out and building around the outside and so it's just going to be a process of continuing to slowly add little by little each one of these little uh, cluster of branches in there to build this out to look like more of a tree. 
So a lot of patience, just uh, keep adding to it. Getting closer, I feel like I've been here all day on this one. Part of that is my aching back <laughs> that I've been dealing with, but uh, we've got uh, a lot more foliage all around this. Got to fill in a little bit more here and back over here, and then we're almost to the point where we can add the greenery. And I have uh, continued to trim as I've gone through this, like this little stuff here. What I find is a lot of times these little teeny tiny ones, they aren't gonna hold anything and my other material will take their place. So I can take that off. So I've cut a lot of those little things out and just continuing to add more to it. I've got some of these that are from last year and have been sun bleached. And then a lot of the darker ones you can see are from this current year. And I often break the rule that I tell you where you really ought to fill in the low inner parts first. I probably should have put some back here. But you can use the tinier pieces and that uh, again makes it kind of time consuming but those little tiny pieces, putting those in on these little itty bitty branches is really valuable, I think, to give a, a realistic look to things. So don't forget to fill in all those spots, all those little holes so that we don't end up with great big gaps in the tree when you're finished too. Okay, so here we are with the tree pretty much finished all the way around. You can see that it's pretty well filled in, so time to go give it some greenery. Well now it's time to give this big tree some green and I'm working in the fall out here. Lots of leaves on the ground. Actually uh, doing a couple of these today. So we'll finish this one. And just about got hit by a little branch, it sounds like. So I'm seeing a few stragglers, pieces that I wanna pull off. I'm breaking off there, but we're gonna go ahead and See what we can do about adding some green here and i'll start down here on the bottom i thank the neighbors for letting their dog bark at me when i'm out in my backyard i love that They're out there trying to shut him up. I appreciate that. They're on the other side of the golf course here. The golf tee. All right. Give that a little more glue. like that outside there to take a little more leaf material so add some more of that in there a little more glue from a distance
and as I've mentioned before, I really like this marking paint as the option for gluing the leaf material on. It's nice to be able to spray downward. Uh, it's cheaper than the expensive glue options and actually works better than most of what I've tried. But it is something that needs to be done outside. Wouldn't want to be breathing in these fumes. I think I need to get a bigger bin to catch my leaf material, especially if I'm going to be doing a lot more of these big trees because a lot more area to drop them over. One of the tricky parts about this is getting your leaves on where you want it, but not on these main branches, but just a little stick or something and you can scrape that off where you don't want it. But it doesn't hurt to have some of that in there anyway because it adds a lot more green to the tree and depending on where the tree is supposed to be growing you might have some moss on the trunk and branches anyway so we'll just keep filling that up with green until we finish the tree and then show you what it looks like Then I'll set those in the tree and let them hang there. Until they, uh, what's the word there? All the chemical smell dissipates. And there's the final tree. One last step with this one, take a little bit of brown paint and a brush. And I'm just going to put a little bit, oh, I think I've got too much paint. Alright, and then what I want to do is 
um, take most of that away now. So that it's just leaving just a little bit of color. Now I think what I'm going to do is I'll take a few pieces of sticks, different things here, and we'll just kind of sprinkle that over and see if we can get some of that to stick on there. Dole that up so it's not too shiny. And look a little more real maybe. So you know I thought, gosh I could leave it there, but I'm an artist. So let's go ahead and take it a step further. done detail work for a long time. Does it show? This sagebrush is naturally a bit more gray than brown, really. That was my cat coming in. She just opened the door. Walk out of the room and furnace is on right next door there.
Now, I would assume, careful, right? <laughs> that this cut section in here would be a bit more weathered. Yep, it's all grown over. And that looks so fresh cut like it really is. So we'll just see if we can do that for it here. I usually don't get this carried away on these, but I'm having fun here, so. Clean those brushes off. Oh, there, now we have a happy little tree. <laughs> 